Hey YouTube, I'm gonna do a video real quick about uh, my fish tank. Um, it's a little outside of the realm of the review videos I normally do, but it does involve a little bit of plumbing. So um, we will touch on that. Um, I have a reef tank here. I have a lot of organisms in here. I also have a refugium sump um, that acts as a filter system. Um, and extra gallons of water for the tank adds a little bit more buffer when things do go wrong which they cer most certainly do go wrong um, stuff happens in the tank you have to accommodate for all kinds of different variables um, so I guess let me just talk about the the plumbing and the overflow system so I didn't have this tank drilled um, before I set it up I didn't plan on getting as crazy as I did I just wanted a little 14 gallon with a, a skimmer set up and it just to run like this, but I ended up getting a sump set up. I built this myself, uh, welded all of the acrylic together with um, acrylic glue or acrylic cement. Um, designed all the compartments myself. You don't have to get this crazy. You can buy a pre-built one. They are very nice and uh, easy to use. My problem was the space limitation I had from my pre-built stand that I made um, restricted me to 11 and a half inches across by 13 inches back, which is what this is um, by 16 inches tall. I designed a filter sock compartment here. Um, so the main water comes in to this chamber from that PVC um, bulkhead. Um, it comes into that chamber in the center there, rises up, filters down, comes past this section up through here, through this filter mesh. That's really just to prevent the flow from getting erratic as it's coming out of here into the Cato chamber. I've got some marine pure block on the bottom and some Kato in there. It used to spin, but it's been getting grabbed up on the rock. Um, I haven't dealt with that. Another project for a later time. I do have a mangrove in there as well as some red ogo here. Um, focus. Uh, the red light is um, hard to get focus. And then I have some uh, refugium mud in there as well. Um, copepods that I added. And after that, it goes from this chamber into the rear sump uh, pump out chamber and then back up into the tank. Uh, I do have a heater in here. You want to make sure that it is in the refugium compartment, which cannot um, go below the sump drain um, opening there. So the water level never goes below like this point in here ever. Uh, so as far as the plumbing, I guess we'll start from where it starts at. It overflows out of this overflow box here. This is a PF Nano overflow um, that I've modified a bit. It came with one tube. It overflows into this central chamber. And then uh, right in there, it ends up coming into the secondary chamber here with this... Um, I don't know, filter foam sock, I guess we'll call it, and then down this line with this control valve that I added in, and then that goes straight into the back of the tank there from that PVC bulkhead. Does the flow that we talked about in there, and then comes back up this return line from the sump system, past this Y check valve, and in through this duct bill into the tank. So, um, that's the main flow of the system. Um, and then on top of that, I added a backup system. I welded this acrylic box onto the side of the overflow and I notched the overflow box so that if the water level crosses a certain height, it goes into this chamber. This chamber fills up to about here and then it'll start going in this tube that I have holes drilled into, down into here. And then it returns into the sump compartment down here and it makes a ton of splashing and a lot of noise so you know if something is wrong and it is overflowing that would be if the water level went too high in the tank it would overflow into that box um 
So like we're talking about redundancies, I added a secondary pipe here. Um, this is a siphon pipe. So the siphon can break or you can get air in here and it'll slowly lower the water level. And if you go too low, the siphon will stop in the tube. This secondary tube acts as a buffer in case one or the other tube collects too much air and stops pumping. Um, it, it prevents that from happening. You have to pull this hose out and suck the air out and then I stick it down into this water to prevent um, any air flow. It creates a vacuum then and then the water flow just goes. The only time it gets air is if this pump creates air. If this uh, power head makes air and it gets sucked into the weir and then the bubbles get into here in situations like that sometimes i think also whenever i shut the pumps off for feeding the water level goes down to the lowest point on the weir um and then the, the frugium sump actually fills up to about this line where it's kind of white at um so yeah, for my tank, because I set up this overflow box on the side, I don't believe there's any situation other than a leak from one of my fittings where my tank can flood. If the tank level gets too high, the water flows into the overflow box and it goes down in the emergency overflow line. Um, if the water level is too low in the tank here, the refugium's just a little bit high. Um, the only situation I guess there would be where I could flood is if both of these U-pipes lost their siphon and then the water kept going out from uh, what was left in the system here and in the refugium and it pumped out the entire sump compartment back into the tank. That would raise the water level in the tank to some degree but once the refugium level dropped to the lowest it can go, um, once it went below those grates on the sump compartment and the sump compartment was empty, you would just hear a dry running sump and wherever the water level is in here is where it would sit. That may be very high. It may be slightly overflowed. I've never tested that scenario, um, but I don't think it would be overflowed in my situation. Um, and if it was, it wouldn't be a whole lot of water on the floor. It's not like it's going to pump out the whole um, seven gallons that I have in my refugium uh, sump system. So I guess that would be really the basics of my plumbing system and how I set it up for redundancy to make sure that uh, I'm not going to have any water leaks in any situation. Um, the only other thing I'll say is I, I did have one occasion where this overflowed out of the top um and i don't remember what it was it might have been me putting epoxy in you're supposed to shut off your um skimmer when you're setting epoxy pieces in here the epoxy does something to the water that makes it bubble up a lot more in there um but yeah other than that i'm pretty sure my system's uh leak proof as far as like uh but i guess i should say overflow proof really um oh man that's a problem that's going to be so fun to get him off of there. All right, well, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to ask. I am not an expert at this by any means, but uh, I have done a lot to set up the system to run automatically and be as worry-free as I can make it for how complex it is. It was much easier to deal with when it was just this, but now the system stays more stabilized and I don't have as many problems inside of the tank as I did before I had the, the refugium filter sump system. So yeah, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.